and the lyrics when do they come in yeah that's that's the last thing that i that that i work on yeah basically first the song has to be like totally finished and then i start working on the lyrics mm. yeah was it difficult or easy this time to write lyrics? Is, is, is writing lyrics, does that get easier when you do it a lot? Or? Um, I don't know. Well, for me, it doesn't really get all that much easier because I'm very nitpicky and I want to... Um, basically, for me, lyrics are very important, you know? Like, if for my sake, if you're going to just write anything, you're better off, like, making the song instrumental, you know? So I... Um, whenever I'm writing lyrics, I, I, I really want to make everything very special and give everything a lot of meaning. So that, that always takes me a, a lot of time, but I do it with a lot of pleasure because I, I, I can look back and then, you know, like sing the songs and know that everything has a lot of meaning for me. So that's mm. very important. Yeah. If you uh, maybe look back on uh, older albums, can you recognize the person uh, who wrote them at that moment? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and that's, that's also really... That's also really interesting for me, you know, because it's kind of, uh, for me, like writing these lyrics is also a little bit of a, a psychotherapy uh, thing, you know, like I kind of like get to understand my own feelings a little bit better when I'm writing these lyrics. So indeed, if I like start reading uh, what I've done in the past, then it does tell me something about who I was back then and where I am now. So it's, yeah, it's nice. Do you have an example of a lyric that maybe helped you understand uh, yourself better? Maybe for this album or the previous one? Um, uh, let me think. Well, I think, uh, like for the previous album, The Flame Within, there is this song called uh, uh, Now or Never. And back then I wrote it uh, thinking about me and, and my sister and my mother. We were all funny enough, like going through a similar process where we were like fighting uh, and struggling where, with the barriers that we make ourselves, you know, uh, uh, that were kind of like holding us back from, from achieving our dreams. And um, I think when I wrote the song, at the beginning I wasn't really sure what I was writing it about, but at the end it became kind of like a a way of, of, of trying to convince myself and convince them like, you know, like this is the time to do it and you really have to fight for what you, what you dream and you shouldn't let yourself or anything uh, or anyone hold you back. Hmm. Yeah. And the dreams that you and your sister and your mother had back then, are they fulfilled now? Or? Actually, yeah, I mean, yeah. well, I'm here, you know, like uh, releasing a new album uh, and making the music that I love and with this these wonderful guys and uh, so that's going really well and uh, uh, my sister is doing musical theater in back in Mexico which is what she really wanted to do like forever and uh, my mom just graduated for her uh, master degree in, uh, in psychology in Mexico so that's that's it's turned out really well yeah. luckily yeah your boyfriend is he also a musician or? yeah he's actually young on the base uh, the base oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> um, be being a, a musician, um, you did some. Uh, 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 you played a lot of violin in the past, and it's also mm -hmm. in this band. But um, do you still have the feeling that there is still enough to improve yourself in, in a musical way? Yeah, of song? course. I, I'm, I'm, I'm really convinced that that's something that you should never stop uh, doing. I think there's always, indeed, like a lot of space to keep growing and. and at the moment that you stop growing, you're just basically like going backwards, you know. So that's it's it's really important for me. That's why I, you know I'm to this day I'm still taking singing lessons and I try to like improve everything uh, uh, that I do, like also uh, with songwriting and everything. There's still always a lot to learn, you know, like from theory and from people. So mm. yeah, that's definitely very important. How do, uh, for example, classical influences uh, find its way in into the music of uh, of Stream of Passion? Do you think? Um, well, yeah, that's uh, that's something that I think just happens also really naturally because um, I do have a little bit of a classical background, you know, because of my uh, uh, music lessons when I was really young. So, uh, yeah, the progressions and the, and the melodies are kind of like also a little bit oriented that way from time to time. So, I think, yeah, that's, that's the pretty thing about just letting everything happen naturally that you'll just like, you know throw uh, out that combination of influence that you have in you and just let it be in the music that you make, so that's nice. 
Okay, how did you uh, step from yeah, uh, playing violin in a more classic way to the type of music you make today? Uh, how um, did that happen, or is that just a long process? Uh? Well, actually, you know, because I, I, I haven't been playing the violin all my life. It's something that I started to do when I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. And I started playing the violin uh, inspired by, all, uh, by metal bands that had violin players in them. Uh, so even though my, my lessons were classical, I, uh, I did it inspired by the idea of like also incorporating it in a, in a more like rock kind of way. So, uh, so yeah, that also felt like very natural, you know, like back then. I, uh, what, what kind of metal bands were uh, inspiring for you, uh, you playing on the, on the violin? Well, I think that the, the, the biggest inspiration back then was My Dying Bride. It's, uh, uh, back then for me it was really really amazing to hear such a band, you know, like combine like all that harshness of the guitars and then something very melodic and, and, uh, and pretty on top of it. So yeah, mm. definitely a uh, big influence back then.